Steve Chabo is Australia's Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister for Trade and Investment and indeed for Foreign Affairs. He says Australia stands to make big gains from the FTA. Look, Australia is really advantaged. Uh, the fact is that we've been able to secure an agreement uh, with China that's going to effectively put Australia in a very competitive position and in fact uh, be a leader in a number of key areas. Um, if you look at, for example, uh, the vast bulk of goods and services, uh, it's about 85% upon signing and uh, and uh, the commencement of the agreement going into place. 85% uh, of goods are entering China tariff-free uh, and then at full implementation will be up to about 95%. So it does represent tremendous opportunity in a range of areas. Plus we've also got uh, good access uh, in a number of key areas uh, in a number of key sectors including for example aged care and others. So uh, it really now comes down to the government having put in place the framework uh, that's going to enable Australian businesses to maximise their opportunities to get into the China market. For a long time people felt that China really held the upper hand. People were falling over themselves to try and do business there. Does this equalise things up a little? This in many respects represents uh, you know, a, a, just a great opportunity for Australia and that's a part of the reason why the government was so focused on being able to, to land these deals. I mean, this has been a negotiation that's been going for nine years um, and Minister Rob, as our Trade and Investment Minister, was really focused and it was a top order issue for him along with the Korea Free Trade Agreement and of course the Japan Economic Partnership Agreement. So to land this um, places Australia in a great position. Uh, China themselves uh, admit that this is a very ambitious agreement for them, in other words meaning that there were a number of sensitivities uh, that China's had to deal with. Uh, it's required a bit of give and take on both sides understandably, uh, but ultimately the modelling shows that this is going to add about $25 billion to the Australian economy, so it's a, it's a big step forward. You talk about sensitivities give and take, of course the opposition has said that they are going to look very carefully at the issue of uh, labour being allowed to be brought in in some cases. What kinds of checks and balances are there going to be? Well, I th think that's a fair assessment from Labor. Uh, the fact is, if you look at, for example, uh, our investment facilitation agreements, uh, what we're doing there is providing focus uh, to say that if you're uh, investing or you're involved in infrastructure investment into Australia, we want to be able to provide some certainty. Now, that's a $150 million threshold that applies to those investment facilitation agreements. Uh, and it means that within that agreement, there's opportunity to bring people in. Uh, but in many respects, uh, the safeguards that exist under the 457 visa system continue to exist. Uh, you can't pay someone below award rates, for example. Uh, so we can see that uh, there is a sensible uh, approach to the way in which uh, we are doing a couple of things. One, providing the uncertainty that investors need, two, limiting the, in this case the IFAs to uh, infrastructure investment uh, and then thirdly making sure that we're still safeguarding in the same way we do with 457 visas uh, things like minimum wage rates. Let's talk a little bit about the agricultural sector and it would seem from people we've spoken to that of course uh, a more cohesive approach might be the way to go, uh, go forward. Do you think there's more to be done there? Well, no. So, I mean, we are we are have have secured under this agreement uh, tremendous access uh, to markets and the abolition of tariffs on food exports. That's a very big positive for Australia. Um, now, you know, I acknowledge that, of course, there's still phytosanitary uh, safeguards that are put in place and you know that applies both ways. The fact is Australia isn't going to put a red line through all of our uh, phytosanitary uh, requirements when it comes to the importation of uh, for example foodstuffs from China and understandably uh, there are also requirements uh, that apply in reverse. So uh, the important factor is though that under this agreement uh, we have got the vast bulk of tariffs down to zero and as I said across the board 85%. In terms of the TPP, both the Minister Andrew Robb and we've heard from the Chinese side as well, there is the sense of perhaps this is going to mostly fall away. Well, look, I, I certainly hope that that's not the case. Um, Australia uh, still sees a tremendous amount of advantages that uh, really uh, demonstrate how strongly the TPP, that is the Trans-Pacific Partnership, will be uh, for Australia's national interest. Um, we're talking about 40% of global GDP. Uh, we're talking about you know, a big net uh, that really is going to present a massive fillip uh, for Australia and of course uh, for the first time an agreement that potentially, or I should say a potential agreement, uh, that incorporates uh, the realisation of the digital economy. 
Steve uh, Choba, briefly with your foreign affairs yeah. hat on, how concerned are you about the status of the relationship with Indonesia with signals from them that they believe this is at an all-time low? Well, look, Australia uh, remains a good friend of Indonesia. Uh, we consider Indonesia to play a crucial role in our region. Uh, we want to have a strong relationship with Indonesia. We've, uh, of course, had a relationship that's had ups and downs, and like any relationship, that's to be expected. Uh, you know, Australians were uh, very upset about what took place with respect to um, uh, Mr Sukumaran and Mr Chan and the fact that uh, Australian citizens were executed. Um, we made our position on that clear. Uh, alternatively, Indonesia's had in the past concerns that they've raised when, for example, overnight the Gillard Labor government stopped uh, the export of cattle to Indonesia, which overnight stopped uh, a lot of uh, meat supply, of course, into Indonesia. So we know that both sides have uh, different points of view on some issues, but with a commitment from both sides to advancing the relationship, which there is, uh, we're very confident that will continue. Steve Chubber, thank you for your time tonight. Pleasure, Beverly. Thank you. Now, police in Indonesia.